Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Mason. And I am honored to have an often guest of the show, a friend of mine and a friend of the show, Carly Joe Thomas. Carly Joe, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Luke. How you doing? Always great to have you back on the show, particularly when you're on to talk about a really impressive uh, submission win victory just a couple of days ago. Uh, and, and we've got a lot to talk about. One is the fight. The other is the fact that that this is Monday night, two days, three days after your fight, and you just finished uh, training at the Mad Factory. We actually come from the Mad Factory right now. That's where you are. So I guess we'll go in reverse. What what makes you so eager to jump back in uh, to training just a couple of days removed from such a great win? Um. Well, I you know came out no injury, so uh, hopefully I get to fight October twenty first. We're trying. So, you know, we're just going to stay right back in the gym. You know, we're healthy. There's no reason to take time off. We want to stay busy. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It really shows your determination. And obviously, everybody at the Mad Factory has that mindset. You were fighting for New Line Cage uh, fighting. What was, the, what was the first round like? How much did you know about your opponent going in? And, and how did it kind of the, the, how did it sort of play out? in the first round before you got to the second round where you finished it? Um, so my my opponent kind of has like a karate, uh, taekwondo style. I got to watch one of her fights, well, her, her fight from last year, and she was like real aggressive. But actually, this, I was expecting that, and she actually wasn't as much. You know, she was still very aggressive. You know, she wanted to fight, but um, she – made improvements, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, you know, we were trying to work the wrestling. Obviously, I'm not going to stand and try to trade with somebody who, um, you know, her, her style is Taekwondo. She throws a lot of kicks and everything. You know, there's no reason to take that kind of risk. So just try to stay in close and work my dirty boxing a little bit. Um, you know, shout out to Chris Williams helping out with that. Uh, I actually had a lot, was doing a lot, like a lot of clinch work in the first round. I was trying to take her down. I was like kind of having a hard time getting like the right positioning, but I was finding a lot of success, like using the clinch, uh, throwing knees, um, kind of wearing her out that way, you know, staying tight with my strikes. Um, and finally, at the end of the, th uh, the end of the first round, I was able to take her down and uh, with an outside trip and kind of, I think, secure the round that way. And um so, yeah, then uh, we go in the second round and, you know, a little exchange on the feet. I ended up shooting and took a kind of a bad shot. My head on the outside I just caught my neck. Mm. And um, thank God I'm good at fighting fighting hands and staying calm and, you know, getting my head attacked. You know, we're known for that at that factory. So uh, I just kind of stayed patient there and kind of got worked the hands to a spot where I was – okay and ended up actually going to a body lock he's like the counter pressure to take her down on the cage and got into half guard passed it a full mount um she was like holding me on top of her for uh you know she just wanted to um she was just like holding me down so I was trying to get like my head my posture back a couple strikes got my head back uh a couple um more strikes she ended up giving me her back was got a little high, so in my transitions, I think I need to like um transition a little bit better, keep a better position. But um, I was able to uh, settle myself back in, flatten her out, work in the rear naked choke. Um, she was kind of tucking her chin, so um, but I knew as soon as I could like get my arm all the way across her neck and grab the shoulder, I could use my other hand to you know lift the chin up and slide it in and finish it from there. I could hear her start to gargle a little bit so i knew i had it yeah that's a that's a very detailed breakdown i um, think it's always go ahead no that was that was pretty much it <laughs> so I, I got to see the clips that you posted to facebook you gave us a really great breakdown yeah. of step by step you seem to have a lot of which well deserved but you seem to have a lot of emotion a lot of excitement of course she tapped you jumped off of her ran over to Justin the General Pat in your corner, of course, started celebrating. What's it what what did that feel like getting getting a win? I know there's been a lot of fights you've wanted to fight. You haven't stayed as as active in the cage as you'd want to. And it was a 
big deal that you got to fight. I know you had some questions coming into this fight medically a couple weeks ago. You were battling a lot out of the cage before you could get into the cage. So you could really see some of that emotion show when you got the win. What did that feel like and how was it to actually get this win given two weeks ago it didn't look like the fight was going to happen? Yeah, I mean, the last, I feel like, year and a half has been kind of um, a little bit of a roller coaster. I've had a lot of, a lot of like, injuries, minor, and I had, you know, I had knee surgery, so I was out for a while for that. And I was coming off a two-fight losing streak, so, you know, that's, I mean, I feel like mentally I was in a really good spot where I was kind of um, didn't care about that, but I knew, like, I had to win this fight. Like, I couldn't lose it. Mm -hmm. Um. So just, and then, you know, they told me two weeks, well, two weeks ago um, that I went to go get my physical and I have a, I had a heart murmur my whole entire life. And when I got the physical, the doctor said, it sounds like I have a Gallup heartbeat, which is like, she was saying is worse, a little bit worse than a heart murmur. So she didn't want to pass me my medicals until I got um, an echocardiogram and was seen by a cardiologist. And I was able to get the, the echo done in time, but I wasn't able to see the cardiologist in time. So I kind of had to tell Keith, he was asking like about my medicals. So I kind of had to tell him what was going on. And I went and got the echo that, that Monday, the week of the fight. And they call after I went home, they called me and they were able to reschedule my cardiologist appointment for Wednesday. And I'm like, are you like are you sure <laughs> because I knew if I could go to the cardiologist and my echo was good and I could get through that I could maybe get her to clear me and it would like all work out at the very last second and it and it did um but when I actually went to the, see the cardiologist she said the echo was perfect but she was actually concerned about my EKG there was like a she said there was a delay in like my heart um my heartbeat so from like one beat to the next, there was like a slight delay. So she made, she was like, I want you to do a stress test. And now I'm sitting there thinking in the doctor's office, I'm like, so maybe it's not going to happen now. Cause oh she's like the test, I don't know if I can get it in today. And then she went and made a few phone calls for me. It was actually able to, um, was it actually able to get it in that same day. So she's like, so you got shoes. I'm like, I got my wrestling shoes in the car. <laughs> so I put my wrestling shoes on and they had me run on the treadmill for a while. Um, passed the stress test with flying colors, thank goodness. And they got me cleared by nick of time on Thursday. And thankfully, like my opponent and Keith were like real patient and, um, you know, wanted to work the fight out. So I got lucky that, I don't know, I just feel really lucky that everything worked out because I think it's a miracle, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, it's a real blessing that it all worked out. And it's always great that you can be thankful to the uh, to your promoter, to the promoter and your opponent. It also really shows, I saw some of that on Facebook, because at one point you posted, you know, you had some medical issues, couldn't get cleared, and you thought the fight was off. So it really just shows your mental stability. And that could be tough, right? But managing the emotions, doing what you could do right in front of you. Uh, although I don't think anybody wants to be sitting in a doctor's office realizing that they feel healthy, they're probably good, but, you know, whether or not you get cleared. It certainly sounds like safety is the most important. We all agree that that's, that's what needs to be a priority, so I'm glad they were able to figure that all out. Now, clearly, this was emotionally a huge win for you because you're coming off a two-fight losing streak that, that you know, wasn't super recent. You've developed quite a bit since since then. You were looking good in your fight versus Oh, Wendy Unnison, but obviously th there was just a little break where she got on your back. I mean, that was your last night before this. Uh, you said you want to fight for 247 Fighting Championships, Brawl in the Berg, 18, October 21st at the Meadows. Uh, what What's your reason for, I mean, I know it, but what's your reason for wanting to be on that card? And uh, how how exciting would it be for you to be able to fight? I always love uh, what, what Jim Mooney, the head matchmaker for 247, gets to throw together. So hopefully... He's excited to try to get something matched up. So let's let's look at that fight. Why do you want to get on that card? And what would you expect out of yourself if a fight came together for Braun the Berg 18? Um, I just want to stay as active as I can. Uh, at the beginning of this year, I knew it was going to be hard to get fights in because of my surgery. I knew I was going to be looking at like 
end of summer, fall before I could fight. And, you know, girls are hard to match. So um, I just want to stay ready and fight on any card that I can fight on. Um, as long as I'm healthy, I, I think that's doable. Uh, I think I'm in great shape. So, and I don't really take time off in the gym um, and I stay around like my weight. So I'm, I try to just be ready like all the time. Um, I've been waiting, like, I feel like all my life to fight and I feel like I keep having these little like hiccups that like stop me for like a year and a half here and there. So, um, I'm just really like eager to just stay active and stay healthy. Um, and two, four, seven, you know, they're, they're obviously a great promotion and I know if I can, um, fight for them, like it's, it's going to be a good thing, especially if I can get some wins, wins with them. Um, you know, and they're local, so, you know, my friends and family can come see, and I know we talked before, and I told you I don't like fighting at home necessarily, but I want to get comfortable doing that, because I know one day I'm going to be fighting in front of a lot of people, and it's going to matter, because they're hopefully going to like me. <laughs> well, so. I love the mental game again. You come from a great gym. You got one of the best coaches around the Hall of Famer, 247 Hall of Famer coach Isaac Greeley. You come out of an incredible coach and, and a wonderful fighter, Nick Brown. I know your roots are with him. So it really goes a long way. I am sure you will be fighting in front of a lot of people in the future. And one of the things that always makes a fighter likable, and of course you would be, I think, very likable as a fighter, is if you love and are excited about what you're doing, that brings fans on board, right? We've seen some fighters probably spend too much time sort of putting on an act and that doesn't really work out long term. I think being genuine and, and loving to fight um, and being focused on fighting and enjoying like a win, like you got that excitement and energy and enthusiasm you showed uh, once you got your win, I, I think will make you a, a big fan favorite in, in the future. So really always very exciting. The, the uh, October card is going to be incredible. I am pretty sure. I don't know. Uh, has Justin had a fight announced? If so, we got to get him on this card. I mean, on this yeah, show. yeah. J Justin's on the card. Um, he got a contract signed. He's fighting. His name's Andrew. I don't okay. remember his last name. Um, so that's obviously going to be awesome. You know, yeah. it's uh, it'll be a fun time in the house if we're both in camp. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm just gonna say. I think that. I think, yeah, that's true. That, that'll be fun. Well, well, I won't ask if you guys are both in camp when I have Justin, the general bat on the show later, I won't ask him how it is uh, because I don't want to get him in trouble. So we'll just, <laughs> we'll just keep it happy thoughts if you guys are both in camp. But of course, the good news is if you do that, you'll both understand what each other's going through and you're always big support and supporters of each other. Have you fought on the same card before? Or would that be a first this October? Actually, um, the last uh, time I fought for 247, we fought oh. on the same card because he right. was the main event that night. That's right. Um, and actually, like, all jokes aside, it's really, like, great having somebody who um, does the same thing because I really think this is a very uh, um, hard, hard thing to be dedicated to and to be in a relationship with somebody who, like, doesn't understand. Um, so it's like really great to have somebody who gets it and like understands fight day, like how to handle things and, and just like, even the weeks leading up to it, um, you know, just it's, yeah, it just, it's honestly makes things like easier <laughs> and he knows what he's doing as much as like we sometimes we like we bicker, but you know, he knows what he's doing. So it's really good to have somebody who's as knowledgeable as like he is, um, you know, in my life every day. Yeah, of course, that makes a big difference. You guys uh, have to be supportive and encouraging for each other outside, like as a couple, and then obviously in in the fight world as well. Super, super exciting. Just a huge congratulations to you. I know there's so much going on. Did you get to uh, go to or watch? I haven't had anybody on yet from the Stouts. BJJ, was that something you caught? What was that like? Did you have anybody from your gym? How was that for you? Going from a big win Saturday the Sunday night being a fan, it's got to be fun to kind of switch in and out of those things. Yeah. Yeah. So we actually did end up going down to the, the stout fights when we got home. Um, 
from Kentucky, and it they're they I mean they were great. Every match I think from the start to finish was like really just awesome. Great matchups, like even matchups, competitive. You know, we got to watch a bunch of our teammates um grapple, like Lucas Jones. That kid, let me tell you, he's special. <laughs> I told him I said his match is my favorite because he was being mean. I love that. <laughs> um, and then you know we had like Ronnie Snee, Cody Gamble. Um, there was a couple other guys. There was a, some girl matches. They were great. Yeah, just all of them was just like awesome. You know, Stout puts on a a good uh good cards usually. Well, that is great. That's great that you got back. Matt Schaefer, Matt Co our coach, Matt Schaefer. We love to see Matt out there. So Matt's also this, Matt, Matt's also a savage. <laughs> That's a great list. I, you, you have so many yeah. incredible, uh, incredible athletes out of your gym, as always. Just so wonderful. Thanks for taking time right after a, a hard training practice. Um, just a couple days removed from your big win for – uh, New Line Cage Fighting, just an incredible. Hopefully everybody was either there in person or could at least see the highlights on your Facebook page with your win. Um, I can't, I really hope that we know Justin General Patton will be fighting for 247. Here he is. Here he is. There he is, hey, buddy. What's up? You just um, scared her. She yeah. jumped. I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, we were just talking about you, uh, and – can't wait to have you on the show to talk about your big co main event coming up for Braun the Berg 18. So we'll have to get that set up. But you guys have a great night. Enjoy celebrating Carly Joe's win. And thanks so much. You guys are always so wonderful on the show. Thanks so much for coming on. All right. See you later, Luke. Take Thank care, you. guys. All right. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Congratulations again. <laughs>